All right, welcome to the messy boat. Uh, it's like whenever doing anything uh, on the boat, just need to take like all the stuff out and put all the stuff back in and stuff like that. So at the moment it's messy, but before I clean up, I want to show you the installation of the uh, of the sensors. So basically, I now installed the temperature sensors uh, for the engine room and different parts of the engine, the shaft bearing. And then I also installed the uh, black water tank uh, sensors as well. So let's first take a look uh, of uh, the installations. So if we go down here, let's see if I can spin the camera around. So here is the box uh, for the temperature sensors. You still need to put the lid on and uh, tidy up all of those. All of those wires there, but yeah, they go through here and then through the walls uh, to the engine room. And while we are here and there is no stuff, here you can see the uh, hot air de-splitter that I was talking uh, in one of my previous videos. So it goes down there and through there and then tend to the side. And then if we go to the engine room, uh, I basically, like none of these sensors are meant to be like accurate as hell uh, when it comes, comes to measuring any of the temperatures. It's more like just show me some trends. Uh, so here inside we have the uh, sensor for the hot water heater and it's just on the side of the tank. Here is the engine room, so it just measures the ambient temperature and this is all still just like testing. Uh, here is the alternator temperature sensor and below here, if you can see here is the uh, basically, well I named it as an oil temperature but it's measuring the uh, engine block to see how that temperature behaves and then if we go forward we can find here is the exhaust uh, outlet uh, sensor, so it can measure the exhaust temperature, and that's also the same the water outlet. So it it has a wet exhaust this boat, so there will be water and exhaust gases going there. So it will be interesting to see the temperature of that as well. And then if we go all the way to the back cabin, we can see here. Here is the temperature sensor for the shaft bearing. So here is the uh, uh, propeller shaft and this is the bearing. Bearing that lubricates it, so it will be a good thing to be able to follow that temperature as well. And as I said previously, all of these are just like a surface temperature, so it will not give me any like really accurate information but it doesn't need to be I just want to follow up on that and here is the here is the uh, black water tank I think the epoxy epoxy glue has yeah, dried up so I can remove all the tapes and put the covers on so here is the ESP32 and all the wiring and then there is the tank sensors and you look down there you can see that the sensors are working because there is um, two of the red lights going on so it's about 40 50 percent full this third sensor is at 60 percent then 80 and then 100 when it's really need time to time to empty it but yeah i will now clean up a little bit put everything back together and then we can look at the screens and how it looks Alrighty, it's been now cleaned up so it looks much nicer one thing I forgot to mention is there is also the uh, 4G router and there is the camera will connect uh, with the Ethernet cable directly to this and then it's streamed to the iPad. So yeah, and that is also, I have an internet connection there so I can basically, I can basically watch the camera uh, view at home or with my phone wherever I am. And then if we spin around, you can see here. It's now the setup, so here I have the, hopefully you can actually see something, it's so shiny, but yeah, let's see how it looks in the edit. So here is the Raspberry Pi, Pi and currently it is so showing the, let's see if I can get it to show, no, I can just see myself, but hopefully you can see something 
so it currently it is showing the black tank level so the, the second sensor is active so it's uh, 40 percent and then if we go to the next page we can see the gauges for the temperature sensors and uh, I ran the engine for a couple of minutes to get some uh, readings here but yeah basically we can see that the alternator went to 29 and the water heater stayed at 30 uh, and the exhaust temperature went up and uh, well the oil temp it was connected in a wrong place so basically I just put it now on the engine block so I just need to change the name of that but yeah here is those and for some mysterious reason the, the Raspberry by uh, Bluetooth cannot connect to the Victron system and it's most likely due to the fact that the Victron is quite far back uh, in the in the bathroom and there is just isn't enough range uh, in the Raspberry Pi to connect it so I will build one more ESP system to monitor the batteries and then if we switch here this is the iPad that I use with the chart plotter and hopefully you can see something in here as well. It's now connected to the camera that's uh, on top of the boat and it's quite windy outside and the storm is coming and yeah this is what I will use uh, at, when at fall it's really dark so it has the infrared capabilities this camera as well so it can see in dark so it will be interesting to see how it looks and if we go here we can see that this is how the looks when the when the nav navigation is on but yeah that's kind of a project for today yeah still still things to do and oh yeah one thing the red button here it's the on off button for the raspberry pi because by default it doesn't have any so yeah, that kind of setup and need to do all the like alarms and adjust the gauges for the temperatures after I get like go out for an hour or two hours to follow up on what the temperatures are so that I know that what they should be and then put some kind of uh, alarms on it when it goes beyond those. But yeah, and uh, in the description of this video you can find a link to Google Drive where I have a uh, all the files uh, for the visual stored for the ESP32 boards, uh, where to buy the stuff, what to buy, and uh, uh, wiring diagrams and all of that. So if you are interested in building one of these setups yourself, you can check the link below and uh, get more information there. And just to just as a disclaimer that even with the instructions, it's not something that you just it's not a plug and play system so you will need some experience uh, with coding uh, and electronics in general and some IT skills as well uh, but yeah I'm pretty sure you can figure it out if you really want to so I will see you on the next one